Henry David Thoreau said, Water is the only drink for a wise man. The corollary to that might well be, it is a wise man who understands, preserves, and conserves his water resources. When it comes to water quality issues in Florida, it is helpful to begin with some of the history of water management here. Historically, the water started here near Orlando in Lake Kissimmee and through a twisting and winding, meandering river, the, the water would get into Lake Okeechobee. The water then would, would fill up and it would slowly make its way south through the Everglades and into Florida Bay. The problem was that once we started to, to restrict these natural systems, we, Hamilton Distant connected a series of lakes in the 1880s connected them all into Lake Kissimmee. The Corps of Engineers was, was charged with straightening the lake in the 1960s. The 1930s saw the, the captivity of the lake when it was set into a, a dike 35 feet high, and suddenly the water could no longer go south at all. Organizations like the Sanibel Captiva Conservation Foundation dedicate considerable resources to research. The Foundation's Marine Laboratory uses cutting-edge technology to monitor the water using a River Estuary Coastal Observing System, otherwise known as RECON. One of the things that we really didn't understand before RECON, before having this system of, of instruments that are placed throughout the Caloosahatchee River, is how a freshwater discharge event how those periods of dark or turbid water were uh, affecting the seagrasses. And now we know that um, long periods of high volume discharges um, slow the growth rates of, of the seagrasses down. Data from Recon is featured on the Foundation's website where visitors can actually track data in real time, see where the sensors are located, and even create custom graphs. This information is really used by people like myself in, in the policy world um, for making decisions and helping to make uh, requests to the agencies that control the decisions that are made. It helps us to have scientific facts at our fingertips to make requests to the agencies. Most of the waterways in southwest Florida are part of the Greater Charlotte Harbor watershed, which covers a total area of approximately four and a half thousand square miles. The Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program works diligently to educate the public and raise awareness of water quality issues. We educate in a number of different ways. The first is we fill in research gaps. There, there's a number of things that we don't really understand about the water and the watershed and the habitats, and we fill that information in. And then we communicate it in a meaningful way to citizens and elected officials. The Estero Bay Aquatic Preserve receives support from the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program to coordinate its volunteer water quality monitoring program. We have uh, sites that run all the way up through Charlotte Harbor, Greater Charlotte Harbor area, from Estero Bay up to Lemon Bay. Um, volunteers come out once a month. Volunteers like Greg Fretwell help to collect the water samples. It helps because it's a snapshot. So if you take the samples first thing in the morning because they are at sunrise, we're getting um, the lowest dissolved oxygen readings of the day, which is sort of the worst case scenario of what the bay is. The, the volunteer program provides um, data for a, a niche that needs to be filled with the um, water quality. Anybody who lives on the water or in the water should be interested in the quality of the water. It's, you know, if you, if you want to put your feet in it. <laughs> So uh, I was really interested more when I started on the, the quality of the water from a health standpoint, and then the more I got interested in it, the more interesting it became. Educational outreach is another important mandate for the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program, but it can be challenging to find effective ways to educate children about the watershed, especially if they live inland. Several years ago, after one of the first nature festivals, a group of public outreach specialists came together and brainstormed on what was needed in our watershed and the children's book was the first thing that was identified. We worked very many years on trying to organize just the right book and when Carol Mahler came forward we knew we had the right person. She outlined her, her vision for the book and it was just beautiful. 
This gives the children a chance to understand how the water flows throughout the entire estuary because each animal starts at the headwaters or the part of the estuary that we're talking about in terms of Caloosahatchee River, it's the Franklin Lock and Dam, and travel that whole watershed with the animals. So they get a sense of how the water flows throughout the entire estuary. In 2008, the Charlotte Harbor National Estuary Program distributed the book free to all third graders in their seven county area and plans to do it again in 2009. The book can also be downloaded from their website. Concerns over water quality issues run deep among organizations and members of the public. When scum and piles of red drift algae washed up on the shores of Sanibel Island, residents Maureen and Michael Valiquet decided they had to act. I was thinking that we would do something to raise awareness and we did before Pure was even organized we had a, a Save Our Water um, forum on Sanibel and like 400 people showed up and from that the Pure Water o Organization was formed. Pure, which stands for People United to Restore Rivers and Estuaries, works on several fronts to protect Southwest Florida's waterways. Its mandate is awareness, education, and advocacy. We were instrumental in getting Sanibel involved in uh, fertilizer ordinance uh, when I showed them pictures of our own canals leaching chemical right off of yards into the, uh, into the boat basin canals of, uh, of North Sanibel. It's amazing. You just assume that the decision makers know what's going on. You sometimes have to educate the decision makers. The city of Sanibel has got their lobby effort going and we're going to focus on our lobby effort, which is activism in Tallahassee and Washington. Pure's newly redesigned website keeps the public current on water issues, both locally and in Tallahassee. Membership in the organization provides an avenue for active public participation in the lobbying effort. The bottom line is, the laws to protect our waters were put in place by the Clean Water Act years ago, but nobody enforces those laws when it comes to uh, certain businesses or uh, agriculture or just golf courses, municipalities, dumping, uh, dumping stormwater runoff is really the problem. Southwest Florida's inherent natural beauty and its world-class tourist designation are intricately linked to its waterways, and it's the wisdom of activists who are working now that will preserve those waters for future generations to enjoy. Mm -hmm.